Anyone, uh, anyone could self-harm. Leave your prejudices at the door. Anyone could be self-harming. Anyone could be asking for your help. Mental illness or self-harming has felt a bit like getting a tattoo. Uh, nobody believes you until they see it. So I'm twin one, so I was born first. Lois is twin two, and we're always so. Should we have like a, because we're like tattoos, should we have like a joint thing? Let me show you. My bum's a bit numb though, but we'll show you. I hope I got right it off. We got it. <laughs> Get your ass out on camera. It was a coping strategy for me. So if something weren't going right or I was angry about something, I'd do that and then I'd be, I'd be all right, I'd be settled in myself. Self-harm is a coping strategy that people turn to when they're in distress and it's a physical reaction to an emotional state. So just as somebody might turn to overeating or exercise or the use of alcohol, somebody might also harm themselves. Self-harm is a broad spectrum of behaviours. I think often the general public get preoccupied with self-injury, some of the things that people might do, such as cutting, but actually we see self-harm on a spectrum, so um, people might consider that to be risk-taking, it might be considered to be promiscuous behaviour, and then you might have the classic forms of self-harm that might be cutting, burning, things like that. It affected me in the way that I couldn't help her. I noticed at the last stages of school, when she obviously she'd try and get me to go to the gym or spinning with her a, a lot, and then when she started decreasing all her food, literally, so there was hardly anything in her diet. So to me, it's heartbreaking because she's she. It's like she doesn't want to be with you. She doesn't want to see you. Nothing like that, and. She's wasting away right in front of your eyes and you can't do anything about it. My name's Hayley Green and I am the founder of Right Minds. Right Minds is an organisation working with people affected by self-harm, suicide and mental health difficulties, promoting self-expression through creative writing and the arts. The reaction can be more like, oh, we need to stop them from self-harming, we need to stop them from cutting themselves. It's like, well, that's not the main problem. But because we're so shocked that somebody would do that, people seem to focus more on the act of it as opposed to th what's behind it. If you're having a really bad day and you physically hurt yourself, you stub your toe, you bang your leg on the table, for the moment that that happens, the distress, the thoughts that are preoccupying somebody can be disturbed, they can be interrupted. And when people self-harm, the way that they're feeling can be interrupted for a short while. Self-harm comes about because of this sort of building up, like maybe like an electrical circuit blowing a fuse. That blown fuse is the self-harm and you've still got this problem. You're overloading it. Am I defined? Oh, by the way they look at me. Will I be tried? Oh. A lot of focus goes on the acts or the harming behaviour itself, which is a point very far down the line in the illness. It begins in a place much earlier, in the persistent negative thoughts and feelings and which are turned inward. I think that self-harm comes about really from a lack of... a lack of self love, uh, you forget who you are, you feel frustrated and angry and you don't feel like you're worth anything so you turn it on yourself and I think that's really where it comes from, uh, from what I've, what I've uh, experienced. 
what we know about young people is that more people are coming forward to us and telling us they've got a problem with self-harm. And there is no doubt in my mind that young people are facing an increase in pressures. We live in a time of social media. People are a lot more exposed. I also think that young people are internalising a sense of perfectionism, body image. And when we internalise those messages of what is good enough, we tend to experience higher levels of distress. And it would only make sense then that we would see higher rates of mental health problems and emotional difficulties across young people, um, which would be manifested in things like an increase in self-harm. One of the main things that you hear a lot of from people that self-harm is that it's just they do not know how to tell people what is going on in their head and uh, because they just don't have the tools to communicate it and often people um, won't listen. As several of the participants have said that they've actually sustained from self-harming um, since the project began and that they just really appreciate that they come to a place where other people understand. Um, it's important to say that all of our facilitators are professional poets and have experience of self-harm. So we kind of understand to an extent what they are going through. So